Hello, my name is Katie Kitson, and I am one of the nurses here at Cardiac and Pulmonary Rehab. I just want to express at any point during your program, you have the pharmacist available to you here free with your program, and, in, and your case manager can set that appointment up for you. Today's education is going to be on part one of medications, including medications for blood pressure and chest pain management, and cholesterol and stroke prevention. We will discuss part two medications next class, which will be on anticoagulation, blood thinning agents, stent management, and antiplatelet agents. So how are my medications cardioprotective? You are here for cardiac events, such as heart attack or valve replacement, and these things are huge changes to your body. Our approach as pharmacists, doctors, and nurses is now lifelong prevention. Scientific data proves that these medications work to keep your heart beating stronger for longer. Ways medications can do this is by minimizing stress on the heart and keep it from overworking, reducing plaque buildup and promoting blood flow through the rest of the body. And these medications prevent and or significantly decrease a stroke or heart attack, which assists to keep you out of the hospital. If by chance you need to go to the hospital, these medications assist to reduce the time you spend there. This is why adherence to your prescribed medication regimen is so important. So high blood pressure increases your risk of strokes and heart attacks. It can worsen heart disease, development of congestive heart failure, amongst other things. As seen as on the diagram, high blood pressure can affect all different areas of your body negatively. People who experience mild to moderate chest pain or angina after their event could be due to the lining of their heart being inflamed and needing to heal, or others may experience chest pain due to the structure of their heart, and it's induced by exercise or stress, which require as needed management. Medications used to treat blood pressure and chest pain are nitrates, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and ACE inhibitors, or ARBs, which we will now, now we'll discuss on the following slides. Nitroglycerin and nitrates. Starting with nitroglycerin, as pictured in the bottle on the screen, some of you may carry this around with you or have received it in the hospital or rescue. Not everyone is prescribed nitro after their hospital stay. This medication is for managing acute onset of chest pain or managing chronic day-to-day -day chest pain with everyday medications that last longer. These medications work by dilating or relaxing blood vessels to open up the blood to flow through to all areas of your body. It is important to note that dilating your arteries can cause a significant drop in your blood pressure, which could cause dizziness or can cause headaches, head rush. This is a common side effect, which shows the medication is actually working. Nitro tablets do expire and yearly should be renewed in case you were to ever need them. You get the optimal benefit. When taking sublingual nitro for chest pain, you take one tablet, place it under your tongue. If after five minutes you have no relief of your chest pain, chest pain, place a second tablet under your tongue. If no relief after the second tablet, take the third tablet under your tongue and call 911 immediately. Please note that if you are taking the three tablets, you should be calling 911 no matter what. And if you're having chest pain, please do not come to cardiac rehab and tell us. Please either call your cardiologist or immediately go to the ER. Other patients with chronic angina can take a medication called isosorbide, which is a long acting agent that works the exact same way. However, it is long acting throughout the day. Beta blockers assist to help your heart beat and function to maintain your blood pressure and heart rate, especially in the setting of arrhythmias, such as AFib. In addition, they can assist to reduce symptoms of chest pain, a risk of another heart attack, and symptoms of chronic heart failure. Commonly prescribed beta blockers are metoprolol, suctionate, metoprolol tartrate, carvedilol, all of the alls. 
And this is proven by science to keep your heart from working too hard. Calcium channel blockers. So similar to beta blockers, we have calcium channel blockers, which help to maintain normal heart rate and blood pressure. However, when calcium enters the cells of the heart, it can constrict the heart muscle tissue and walls. This constriction causes more pressure on those arterial walls, which can cause your blood pressure number to increase. Therefore, calcium channel blockers attach to these receptors to relax the heart muscle, which decreases your blood pressure. Again, decreasing your blood pressure can help to reduce those symptoms of chest pain or angina. And commonly prescribed calcium channel blockers are amlodipine, diltiazem, verapamil, etc. Inhibitors or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So these work to control blood pressure by maintaining a good balance of sodium and potassium in the body. Most commonly prescribed are lisinopril, enalapril, or any of the prills. ACEs and ARBs assist in heart healing after a heart attack. In addition, they are proven by science um, that these medications are better for kidney disease and diabetes. We're concerned about this because the only way to excrete high levels of sugars or electrolytes in the body is through your urine. High levels of sugars going through the kidneys can cause damage. The most common side effect of these medications is a dry cough, which has caused many patients to switch off this medication. If this is something that has happened to you, reach out to your cardiologist to discuss this to switch your medication. Make sure you do not stop taking without a cardiologist's approval. The most concerning side effect is angioedema or a life-threatening swelling of the tongue, mouth, and lips. This is a very rare side effect, but it is just something to be mindful of. So ARBs, again, these are used for blood pressure and sodium potassium balance. Therefore, it is important to know you are on either of these two medications. Frequent blood work will be ordered to monitor your potassium levels. Too little or too much potassium in your blood can affect the way your heart pumps to blood to the rest of your body. Examples of ARBs are Losartan or Valsartan or all of the Artans. Cholesterol lowering agents and stroke prevention. So maintaining appropriate levels of cholesterol is important to keep adequate blood flow in the arteries. Too much cholesterol in your body can cause blockages in the heart, which in turn cause blood flow blockages, and that can lead to heart and circulatory issues. These are some of the most important medications post cardiac event to keep those stents open and patent to get the blood flow through and to keep you living longer and prevent future hospitalizations. So statins. Statins assist to lower the cholesterol in your body as well as reduce mortality, future heart attacks or stroke, and the progression of coronary artery disease or peripheral vascular disease. These are known as LDL lowering agents where LDL is also known as quote unquote, the bad cholesterol. Examples of these are torvastatin or simvastatin. It is important to note that grapefruit juice is a drug interaction with these medications. And that's high concentrated, frequent grapefruit juice. You know, if you were to have one cup of grapefruit juice once in a while, it most likely wouldn't do anything. However, we wouldn't recommend it. Common side effects of statins are frequent, you know, muscle pain, numbness, tingling, or weakness. Um, a lot of patients have switched off of some statins and tried other medications because they were unable to take the muscle pain. It's good to know that statins side effects can occur at any point during your medical therapy. So it could be three weeks, three days. In this case, there are other options to take for cholesterol lowering agents such as so non-statin LDL lowering agents examples of that are Zadia or the PSK9 inhibitors which are injectables 
So when a torvastatin or things like that aren't able to be tolerated because of the side effects, um, the cardiologist will prescribe these medications um, in addition to help lowering that cholesterol. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask after this lecture. Um, again, you know, we have the pharmacists available with your program, so you can make an appointment with them at any time. They are wonderful. We ask them questions and learn from them as um, new medications come out and new data is out. They educate us as well. And just ask, you know, if you see me or any other of the nurses, you can ask us questions at any time. Um, please don't feel, you know, um, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for listening.